In this video, we look at thermographics and passive house. Thermographic cameras provide another view of building performance. They can be a critical tool to identify facade faults as well as other issues of interest in passive house projects. However, understanding their uses must be balanced with understanding their constraints. Costs have dropped a order of magnitude over the last decade. On the upper right, the camera from Fleur that, well, just the lens itself cost 10,000 quid. And over time, costs dropped to five, but now maybe 300 or 400 pounds only. So does it become a rucksack tool, which we carry everywhere, or is it one that's deployed by an expert consultant? A bit of a background first. Thermographic cameras are passive devices. They detect levels of long wave radiation. They convert this radiation they detect into an image which uses color to represent temperature. Most thermographic cameras record images at a very much lower resolution than we would get in a normal camera. Higher resolution costs a lot more money. There will be different options about spot measurements, sequences of images to create animations. Some vendors will include a temperature scale on the side. There's some more background we should know about. Normal building materials tended to have a matte finish in the long wave. But things like metal and glass, well, they often act as mirrors. In the upper left, we see the person taking the infrared image reflected in the image. On the upper right, we have a shiny metal surface, which is reflecting an adjacent person. The lower left, we're looking at a piece of glass. However, we won't actually see the proper temperature of the glass unless we put a neutral patch over it. Same thing with the shiny metal surface. An adhesive label works reasonably well for ad hoc use. The use of thermographic cameras might appear to be simple. However, often we only know enough to be dangerous. What are the images we're actually seeing here? Is that blue actually air leaking through? Or is it a failure in the gasket or a thermal bridge? In the lower right, yes, there's some dark, dark purple there. Is that part of the frame or is that air leaking in? In the lower left, we're looking at a metal facade and glazing but it's a clear night. The sky is very cold. What we're picking up is probably a reflection of the sky. So there are a serious set of skills involved in properly interpreting a thermographic image. So what's it actually like? Well, let's start with an inexpensive standalone thermographic camera in the order of three to 400 pounds cost. And the images are stored on an SD card inside, which is then removed to use. Yes, yes, you can see my hand as being a rather warm thing. Um, let's point it at this thermos flask, which now has uh, a combination of shiny metal and the paper uh, covering. And you can see that it's picking up the reflection of my hand on the side as it goes. Now, of course, the main thing with a thermographic camera is that we want to find the fault. And of course, the fault in this particular item is the plastic uh, cap on the thermos flask. It's the main heat loss source. We can then take an image of it. And later on, we could go back and look at that image and then send it on to someone else. There's the USB connection for charging it, as well as the little SD card, and there's the sensor. There are also thermographic cameras that connect to a phone. Here's an example 
of that. So there's the unit. And there will be some software on the, on the phone that will run that. We plug it in. The software starts up. And then it registers. Now in this case, um, you see a slightly different interface from the standalone unit. In this case, we're getting a uh, plus and minus, uh, the maximum and minimum being recorded on there. And of course, we can still see the reflection of an adjacent warm body on that metal. And again, we get the same information uh, related to the thermal bridge at that cap. And if we can also, of course, look back at previous um, sessions that we've had with a thermographic camera and pass these on to other interested parties and we can switch to different kind ways of dis displaying the information using different color regimes. And what we just took a few moments ago, of course, uh, can be recorded. It's a very slow process. It's maybe only three or four frames per second. Again, we're using the paper to get the proper temperature at the surface because if we look at the shiny metal, what we are getting is the reflection, the temperature of the reflected item. What are other uses? Well, of course, finding facade faults. There are many kinds of facade faults that we would find if we did a survey of the building um, as it's being constructed or as it's being occupied. Things like framing systems that are not put in properly, gaskets that are not working. And of course, we would confirm an air leakage being the source by way of something like a smoke test. Yes, there is a trickle vent. It's helping to warm up the outside. Of course, we can see classic faults at junctions, and those very dark purple places might be where we would expect to eventually find some mold growth. In extreme cases, we can also see the mortar joints, gaps in insulation, faults in the construction. Other uses? Well, heat emissions, items like radiators. It is starting up and some five minutes later, it's gradually, the heat is coming down from the top of the radiator. Other uses? Okay, there is a wet central heating pipe in the flooring system. It's obviously not well lagged. And there are some electric coils in a floor being used for heating purposes. One of the things that you get with some thermographic cameras is a exaggerated level of color change, the full range of color over the limited range of temperatures within the view. Here's another use, taking a survey outside the building. In this particular case, it's a relatively mild spring day. It's a somewhat recent construction but because the temperature differences are relatively small, there's not so much to see, and it's very pixelated. Here's another survey inside. So imagine walking around a property and finding things. There's a radiator, there's the heat plume coming off of it, cold glass being shown, and as we rotate around here, ah, oh, we have a, guess what? Heat coming out of a chimney. Uh, flew behind. So, passive house, thermographic camera should see almost nothing. There are essentially no faults in that particular building. In a 1950s house, oh my goodness, yes, 
doing a really good job heating up the neighborhood. And there seems to be a systematic fault in the box room over the entrance that is losing a lot more heat.